So, well, thank you for coming and answering questions. This one is from Brendan Bacos in Melbourne, Australia. He says, hello, Sybil. I have seen many of your films from the 80s. Are you a fan of horror flicks yourself? And do you enjoy acting as much as you did when you started? Well, first of all, hello there down under. I have a lot of fans in Australia, so thank you for asking this question. You know, I do like horror movies. I do, especially good horror movies. And of course, talking about good horror movies, Halloween has to be among the top and really the best of the crop. Um, I did one horror movie that you all know about, which is probably the most famous one that I did, which was The Howling 2. And I loved doing that movie, but I was actually the killer in there. So maybe because most of the roles that I've always done in my lifetime, I've always played the stronger character. In general, I'm, I'm very happy to be a part of Halloween, this, um, this icon of all horror movies. This question is from Jerry in Highland Park, Illinois. He'd like to know how you became part of Halloween. I was working, and I'm sure you've all seen it, I hope so. Um, I know it hasn't been released all over the world, but it was released here in the United States. I did Werewolf Women of the SS with Rob Zombie, which was Grindhouse, Tarantino and Rodriguez's Grindhouse. And um, it was actually the last day of our shooting of that. And I knew I had seen in the offices of Rob that there were these pictures up on the wall for Halloween and, and I said to the production team there, I said, hell, it looks like you guys already have everything cast in this movie. Is there anything left at all? I would love to be a part of it because I do love Halloween. When I talked to the guys in the production, they said, you know, Sybil, we're so sorry because there are no more roles. Halloween has been cast for months now. So on the last day of shooting, Werewolf Women of the SS, I walked up to Rob and I said, Rob, do you have anything at all for me in Halloween? I would love to be a part of Halloween and I'd love to work with you again. And he thought for a moment and he said, you know what, right now there's no role for you, but I am working on a rewrite, so I will give it some thought. So then, by the end of that day, I was actually on the way to the trailer and to take my makeup off, Rob walks up to me and, um, and he says, you know what, Sybil, I have a role for you. And I said, oh great, what is it? And he said, you can play the nurse. I said, wow, it's like Nurse Ranchet. And we all know how famous she was. And uh, he said, yes, you're going to play the nurse. And actually, you're not just going to play the nurse, but you're going to be the last person that little Mike kills. So that's a very important position in the movie. It's a small role, but it's a very important position. And I said, for me, and especially in this movie, the size of the role is never important. It's always what the role is and within what movie that role is. And working with Rob and working on Halloween, and with Rob on Halloween, I didn't care how small it was. So I was very happy, and that's how it happened. And I had the role. This question is from Mary Jane Sorbetton in Houston, Texas. She wants to know uh, if you can describe how the scene with you and young Michael was shot. How was the effect with the fork done, and was it difficult filming such a violent scene? Wow. Well, okay, let me start from the back. Um, violent scenes are never difficult for me to shoot. Uh, as a matter of fact, the last movie that I produced that a lot of you saw because it did very well was L.A. Bounty and I played a bounty hunter where I did all my own stunts and got hurt so bad that I actually had a back injury and that goes back uh, a few years. So violent scenes have, you know, always been a part of a lot of my movie making as you all know. I was um, not afraid of that. I was looking forward to it and I knew that uh, it was going to turn out really good. And um, But the strange thing is when we got to doing that scene and actually uh, I think pretty much of everything that I shot is in the movie but I, I only shot one day and we got everything in that day. My scenes were with Dr. Loomis and, um, and with, with Sherry and of course with Dag, with Little Mike. 
And it all started out, you know, just normal. And uh, I was there to take care of him because the doctor had to leave the room. But when he starts attacking me, and there's something that I say to him, which I don't want to tell you guys what it is, otherwise the suspense will all be gone. But there's something that I say, which you can imagine, ticks him off. And when he attacks me, I will say one thing. I get forked to death, okay? I mean, I've been chandeliered to death by Richard Burton in a movie, and I've, I've had all kinds of deaths, but I've never been forked to death. And I kind of thought it was really um, interesting. That's actually one thing that Rob said to me when he said, um, you're going to be killed by Little Mike, and you're the last one to be killed. And by the way, you're going to be forked to death. <clears throat> and I said, OK, forked to death? Hey, fork you. <laughs> so, um, but the strange thing is, we never, in that entire scene, he never uses the fork because it all goes so fast so I don't know how that was done because I'm I'm in a position where I don't of course see him attack me otherwise I think my character might have been able to overrun him or at least let's say the Sybil Danning part of that character could have overrun little Mike but I was in such a position where he surprised me and when he attacks me you don't see directly how he's doing it because I understand they now go to a monitor, which is uh, being monitored from outside of that room in the insane asylum, and Dr. Loomis sees that over the monitor. So you, all of a sudden you see it in black and white, and you see him attacking me, and the next thing you know there's a lot of blood and I'm on the floor. So it goes very fast and very mysterious, but yes, I am forked to death. Great. This question is from Mark Tressley in Norfolk, Virginia. What was it like working with Malcolm McDowell, Sherry Moon, and Daig on your scene? Well, like I mentioned, um, Daig and I only had that one scene together, but we were at the rap party together, um, and then of course at the premiere together, and he is a wonderful and adorable little boy. His mother was there and chaperoned him all the time. And from what I understand, I believe this is his first movie, if I'm not mistaken, this is his first movie, and I think it was quite quite a challenge for him. But the day that we worked together, he was very professional. He was like an old pro. I mean, he was, he was sitting there, he was waiting for the camera very patiently. He got into his character, he, and he was surprisingly very, very scary. Sherry, well, Sherry and I have worked together before, as you all know, or you haven't seen it yet, depending on what part of the world you are. We did Werewolf Women of the SS together, and Sherry and I were the Krupp sisters. Krupp, se Krupp sisters, the women of the SS. And strange enough, you know, I come from Austria, like Arnold, and I worked for a long time to get rid of my German accent because I didn't want to always have to play the wife of the Nazi, you know. So all this time I'm working to lose my accent and I've never played a Nazi all the years I've been in Hollywood and all of a sudden Rob, my man, Rob calls and says, Sybil, you're going to play one of the sisters and Sherry's going to play the other sister. And I was really happy to do it. We played it with a little bit of an accent and because it is a comedy we had a lot of fun with it. But doing this role, um, and during the shoot of the role, I got to know Sherry. We bonded right away. Well, Malcolm, I have loved Malcolm as an actor. I had never met Malcolm before, but since then we've done a show together, a memorabilia show, and um, we signed autographs for our fans together, so I've gotten to know uh, Malcolm more off the set than on the set, but when we met on the set, what little time we had to talk, um, I really enjoyed his company and uh, of course we all loved him in Clockwork Orange and a lot of other movies and I just, um, I'd love to work with him again. He's, um, he's, a, he's a great character and it was the first show he did, the first memorabilia show he did. Uh, it was horror find in um, in Baltimore, Maryland, and he just had the time of his life. He said, Sybil, this is the first time I've done these kind of shows, and I love that contact with a fan. It's wonderful. So he's a great guy. Very down to earth.